Anyone could go for a regular massage, not know you have a clot. Unknowingly, that masseuse could just regular massage. That thing breaks off and kill you. I'm like, that can happen? Now that's all I think about whenever I feel like I want a massage. That's all I'll ever think about. <laughs> that's it. that's a, it's a knot. That's a clot. What? It's a knot. <laughs> So in 2016, I get kidney stones. I'm on bed rest and both my legs clot. And I'm like, this, what the fuck is this? I go to the hospital. They're like, you're clotting. I'm like, okay, what does, does that, that mean? Happen? And they, it's then become six months of hell of them trying to fit. They, they think I have cancer. They think I've got all kinds of shit going on. And it ends up that someone does a blood test and I have this shit called factor five Leiden. It's just, it just means my blood is syrup. It's thick blood. It's prone to clotting. I just have to keep my machine moving. By the way, the machine coming out this, this month, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Memorial Day weekend. I can't wait, bro. I'm a little nervous. I can't wait. <laughs> Congrats, by the way. Thank you. When I saw the trailer, I was like, "What a great fucking origin story!" It's a, it's I'm it's I'm so really creative. excited for it, I, and I I'm nervous. I, you know, I I mean, we'll talk about. I'm nervous. We'll talk I'm nervous about, about all my this. special. I can't believe you, you know you got a movie. I don't know. What, I'll be have diarrhea every day. I uh, yeah. There's I I never. You know, it's so funny. I thought I've I've always thought I've been putting out good work, and it's and it's been paying it's off. It's been great. But like I I think. I don't know why Razzle Dazzle is different than the other specials, but it's got it's been it's so much bigger than you, even Hey Big Boy, which was aired in the pandemic. Is Razzle Dazzle an intentional title? Yeah, I just learned what Razzle Dazzle meant. I looked it up because of your special. What does it mean? Do you know? No, for real? No, I just I like the phrase Razzle Dazzle. Yeah, <laughs> I swear to God, look Razzle Dazzle up right now, dude. <laughs> I thought this was an intentional title. noisy showy and exciting activity and display designed to attract and impress that's me it is holy you, fuck dude. that's me it's that's great. me to a t no i don't know I, I we i had a guy i've said this before but we i worked on this tv show on travel channel and this guy john burston was our um was our upm and our first day even though he, he's not a gay dude, but he has, sometimes if he gets drunk, he has a little bit of a Southern gay affectation. Mm -hmm. And he just, <laughs> throw money at it. Oh, good. You got you to gotta spend money to make money. That's how, uh, <laughs> it's the cost of doing business. He had phrases like that. And one of the ones he'd say all the time was, like when our very first day of working, we have a crew, crew of 11, and the waitress came over and was like, uh, what can I get you guys for starters for an appetizer? And he goes, oh, razzle dazzle. <laughs> and she it. goes, what does that mean? He goes, what do you think it means, honey? Razzle dazzle. And she brought out a bunch of really great apps. And then I've been saying it since that day forward. And I say it all the time. And it's, I, I try to name my specials after something that comes out that, I, that you'll catch me saying a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly promoting it. Like I say secret time to this day all the time. Do you? I say it on stage. I can't. I say it constantly. And that's my motto is secret time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not really certain. I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Wow. So I hope everyone likes it. They're going to fucking love it, dude. So we go back to so, so your I, syrup blood. They find out I have syrup blood. So now everyone in my family has to get tested to see if they also have it because it's genetic. So my mother does not. My two brothers do not. So we deduce that my father gave this bullshit to me, right? Oh, wow. And now we realize at that point that he no longer he died of a heart attack. He died of this bullshit. He clotted and died. And it made sense why there was blood on his toe now and shit. So he dies. Then we move in with my grandma. And this is what we were talking about where I'm giving her CPR and the fucking Jesus picture was tilted. And I think she was really trying to see Jesus, but I was blocking it while I'm trying to save her life. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh shit, she gave it to him. So I've had this thing since birth Holy shit. and I'm aware of it now. So I go for a back surgery. Dan 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 this is not kidney stones. This is back surgery. This is now. 2016 was kidney stones. This is now literally you January. you do not know you have it yet. What's that? Well, you found out you had it when you had kidney stones, right? right? So okay. now I know I have it. So they don't keep me on blood thinners. They just tell me you'll be fine. They oh, put me on them to bring me back to normal. Shit, and they because so when I got, when I had this surgery on my elbow, mm -hmm. I had to get off my blood thinners because if they open you up and you're on blood thinners, you bleed out. That's right. <clears throat> oh, fuck. So they don't put me on them, and they tell me when I fly, <clears throat> excuse me, wear compression pants. On long flights, get up every 90 minutes. I'm the guy that's got to go to the back of the plane, and I'm back there stretching my quads and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of shit. So um, 
I tell every motherfucker that will listen, I'm supposed to go in for a spinal decompression um, surgery where my L4, 3, 4, and 5 are fucked. And it's been fucked since I was in high school. And now I'm turning 50. And I headlined the Troubadour last year. And it was the first time in 20-some years I had to sit on a stool on stage because both of my legs went numb. Really? I've been battling with left leg numb. So if you really watch me on stage, I'll usually sit back on my right hip just because yeah. this leg is numb. Well, then they both started going numb, and I couldn't my, fuck. My, you ever had that? This leg started going numb. When I went to Australia, the last time I went to Australia, this leg was going that's numb. That's a flight that'll kill me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a flight that could kill me. I got to do it. I've already. If you're listening to this, I've already done it, but I got to do it coming up. This leg, I my I'm for me, it's sciatic, I right. think, I think. And so my leg will go numb and it fucking sucks. I, I had these compression pants mm -hmm. that are, they were like, they inflate. You ever use those? I saw, I saw you do those leg things. Yeah, the other I do day. those. Are legs? those good? I have ones for the hips. I did the hips one time. Are they for circulation? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, oh, it, I got to get those. Uh, I wish I had them here. I'd let you try them right now. They, they, well, maybe not. Maybe you might die. The <laughs> talking to a doctor I, first. I could. But. <laughs> How's it feeling, Ryan? Ryan? Ryan they Ryan. told me that ah. I could go, or anyone could go for a regular massage, not know you have a clot. Unknowingly, that masseuse could just regular massage. That thing breaks off and kill you. I'm like, that can happen? Now that's all I think about whenever I feel like I want a massage. That's all I'll ever think about. <laughs> Way to destroy the massage that's industry. Fucking shit. Oh, my <laughs> God. imagine if it really dipped? Oh, my like God. There's so many ways to fucking die. <laughs> fucking... Can you so imagine? many stupid ways. Wait, you got a little yeah. lump here. Uh, <laughs> that's it. that's a, it's a knot. That's a clot. What? It's a knot. <laughs> I didn't know you could oh, die like fuck. that. Dude, how scary. Okay, so Dan Van Kirk calls it my Gilligan's Island. This was supposed to be a three-hour outpatient procedure for the spinal What thing. were they going to do? So they were going to go in and they were going to clean up it's sort of an arthroscopic for the back. Like they had to redrill the holes because the nerves weren't flowing freely through the canals. And then there's a bunch of gristle and bone spurs and shit. Get all and that out genetic. of there. This is not just the blood thing is my back is fucked up from high school. From what? I'm weight training. Did you have weight training in high school? Yeah. As a class, oh, right? Oh, no, 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 no. This was a class. And... Our high school was, I graduated 91, right? So I'm 50. Our, our weight training was, if you could 300 bench, 500 squat. We don't give a fuck how you put that 300 and 500 up. But if you can do it, you're getting your name on the wall and you're getting a t-shirt so you could walk around the school and show everybody I'm, I'm strong, not smart. I never got to 225 in no? high school. In college, randomly, I got to 225. Right now, I'm benching... Uh, I'm benching, I think, 275. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm gonna I thought get, I saw you I'm going to try to get to 300 because I'm... Uh, the highest I ever did was 300 in college. Jesus. Yeah, I was strong. Jesus. That is strong. I would rep 225 10 times, no problem. Yeah, that's a good feeling. I'm on juice right you now. You know what I did? <laughs> Are you? Oh, yeah, it feels so good. <laughs> fucking writhing through my veins. Just fucking... I wake up with a, I wake up with a hard dick every day. Do Sorry you? you had to hear this, Christine. I joked <laughs> on... I, <laughs> I, I jerked Sorry, off three dude. times the other day. <laughs> three Hell times. Yeah, fuck just, yeah. I was chasing the rabbit. What is it? I have no idea, man. I, I think it's, I think. Is it, how are you taking it? I take it in the ass. And what is. Isolate that audio. Is it the, is it a steroid? It's testosterone. Oh, it's testosterone. Yeah, I take, yeah. I'm taking testosterone. Um, Tommy got me on it. Mm -hmm. Tommy shot me up the other day. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna, I think my balls are shriveling up. I they do. If, I, think I took gone. it for a little while. It was a cream I would put on my yeah. arm and it fucking, it definitely made my balls smaller. Yeah. My balls are tiny. I don't I, like my, that. My loads are, are like, when I come, it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rattlesnake now. <laughs> it's a spitting <sighs> cobra. <laughs> my, my dick just goes. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> But I don't need it. It's, it's less clean up. <laughs> it's true. Like, I, I'm, I'm down for just the feeling. I yeah, would love to feel, just have the yeah, feeling. Yeah, go back to the eighth grade. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing came out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. My dick's got the back dry, to dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just hold its hair. Don't worry. I'll hold your hair. I'll hold your hair, man. <laughs> Oh, 
motherfucker. <clears throat> Can so, I tell you something real personal? Please. All right. Oh, I hope this is so creepy. I keep my pipes clean, right? I'm I I'll if if I'm not in a relationship, I'll just I'll masturbate like you say okay, two, yeah. three times a day. And I would say to the doctor one time, I go, Hey, these this cholesterol and blood pressure I'm on is supposed to make me not hard or whatever, but I'm like I'm like jerking off two or three times a day. And he's like, You're just bored. And I was like, That's your advice? I'm bored. So when I was Get in the hospital, hobby. this whole thing, he wasn't wrong. Off, though. He wasn't wrong. I should have played pickleball. I should have said that to the president of Travel Channel when she goes, do you have a hobby? I go, jerk it off. So, <laughs> so he said, you're bored. <laughs> so... So you're going to get the surgery. This whole thing in the hospital, real quick. I'm in there. I'm supposed to, be, again, three-day three, three day outpatient procedure. After what we're going to talk about, I end up in the hospital for a month, okay? What the fuck? And I haven't fucking... I go home for two weeks. I'm just on bed rest, and I haven't jerked off or anything. It's been six weeks, and I'm oh, like, wow. you know what? I'm not even horny, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fucking get this out. I'm going to get one out. And I'm laying on the couch by myself, and I'm just... Bert... It fucking hurt. It hurt. It was like jelly coming out. It because hurt. It, it was clotting? Yeah. No. It, it had, listen, it had an orange tint to it. I was like, is that blood? It hurt for the first two of them. Hurt so. It was painful. It was thick. I was like, ah. <laughs> I can't move my it's back. It's like when you're taking a shit, you feel like it comes, it's coming out pathetic. sideways. Pathetic. I was so fucking sad and Oh, my pathetic. God. Two of them like that. Then after that, we were good to go. That was primed again. So wait, so you going in for a three-hour right. outpatient surgery? So I go surgery? in for this three-hour outpatient procedure. Um, they do it. I go home. And the, the recovery is supposed to be you get up, you walk a little bit. Incrementally, you get more and more. Well, my surgical area is starting to swell up it's starting to be like a fucking iv bag back there and the really? surgeon's like okay you might have a bleed in there or something's going on it could be surgical fluid just i want you to send me pictures over the weekend and i'll make a um, decision so then he's like yeah now you need to go on bed rest i'm like all right well remember i put in all my fucking paperwork you even said to me he even said man you're really worried about that factor five huh i said yeah because what I didn't tell you is in 2016, I not only did I clot, it moved to my chest and they kept releasing me from the hospital, telling me nothing's wrong with me. I'm like, you're out of your mind. And I beat these fucking clots with no medication, no nothing. And I know that now because of what just happened. Yeah. They're like, you shouldn't even be here. So I go, I, they, the thing swells up and they say, all right, you need to come back in. So they open me up again and there's a one millimeter tear in there, right? Um, they said it could happen from anything. They said when I was coming out of anesthesia, I was coughing a lot, whatever. So now they fixed the tear. Well, now they put me in the general population area and I'm just in, you know, there's a lady here that had had knee surgery. There's someone that's coming in here with a thumb surgery. They're two hours. They're gone. They're playing music. I'm, I'm in there for days. I'm trying to rest. I can't get up and even use the bathroom. I can't walk. I can't do anything. And I keep telling anyone who will fucking listen not to let me lay here and clot. It's only supposed to be three days. Three turns into four to five to six. And you're sitting in gen pop. I'm not sitting. I'm laying on my back, Bert. Oh, fuck. Helpless, like a vegetable. I can't move. I can't do anything. But I'm telling everybody, don't let me clot. Well, they start giving me the lauded in my IV for the pain. Okay. Yeah. See, I know it's so funny the way people jazz up, man. I hated it. Oh, for real? Do you want to know what the fuck I saw, Bert? What? I started tripping hard. I saw, like, if you were talking to me right now, I would see chunks of your face bloody fall off and oh. hit the table. Real, And then I would see the bone under your face, and I'd be like, and then you would have a mask on because they make you wear a mask in hospital. I would see it just going flip, 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 flip. Yeah, I can see how that wouldn't be enjoyable. And I was like, well, so I called the nurse over. I go, well, listen, I'm tripping. I'm seeing flesh fall off your face while you talk to me. You got to get this shit out of my IV. This lady next to me, Curtin, she goes, I'm seeing it too. <laughs> <laughs> Her name was Cheryl. I said, Cheryl, you've been tripping over there? She's like, I'm tripping. I said, get this shit out of my IV now. Now, this is all, as as Dan Van Kurt DVK says, theater of the mind. I don't see anything. My I'm in curtains. I've got a little net at the top. But I can see ceiling tiles. This is all theater of the mind. So really? diagonal for me is a junkie. 
okay? This guy's yelling at everyone, and he wants his fucking morphine, and he knows his schedule when he's supposed to get it, and he's fucking yelling at him. He's like, I've never been, fuck you. And then you'll come in and give him the morphine on the night shift. He's like, Bert, you're the nicest nurse ever. Everybody else is an asshole. Oh, my God. So this dude's. Wait, and you and you got to be just be around these people. I'm laying there. I can't, I'm stuck. I'm oh, spending night after night in the general in population area. Cedars. This guy starts yelling one night, right? And he's telling him that the, the law is not helping his foot. And everything I put together, his, he's shooting up in his foot. His foot's rotting. Okay. And they tell him if the Dilaudid isn't helping that, we may have to take your foot. So the last thing they're going to do to this dude, this is all this land. I'm like, oh my God. This is like. They talk to him about maggot therapy. Have you ever heard of maggot therapy? Yes, I have. They're going to do it to him. Uh, it's kind of sexy. What do you mean? I don't dude? know why. I don't know why, but it just it just fucking turns it's me on. It's primitive as shit, yeah, too. Yeah, pull up maggot therapy, Halston. Mm -hmm. This will fucking freak you out. You know what that is, Christine? Oh my god, it's when they let the maggots go in to eat all the dead, dead rotting flesh. flesh. Yeah, and then they'll they'll put maggots in there, and then they'll wrap it, and they'll and yeah. <laughs> look at it. Look, this is what his foot looks like. Like this here is what I'm seeing in my mind. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Go to one of those pictures. I don't know why that turns me on. Look at that shit. And the maggots eat all the bad shit. Yep. And then they fucking flush the maggots out. And you get. God damn it. So this is what they're going to do to the fucking guy. And if then fun, that doesn't work. How much fun would that be on the bottom of your foot? Oh, look at that. Adios. Oh. Oh. I mean, I don't want that because I'm sure it hurts. But wow. Adios foot Fuck if they can't fucking me. save this guy. So Wednesday rolls around. This dude's arguing again. He starts fucking pop. He's going nuts. And they brought him a turkey burger. And this motherfucker. And I'm I'm lo I'm supposed to be there three. It's like day seven or eight. Jesus now. Christ. And he goes, I said I wanted the tilapia. And I just, from my back, my back, I said, how the fuck do you know we get tilapia? <laughs> I lost my shit. And that was the moment I realized, Burt Kreischer, that I don't know anything. The way a junkie knows the system. Oh, they yeah. are mass. They have doctorates of that shit. I have children. I don't know anything. I don't know what they get for school on Wednesday. Yeah. This motherfucker knows we get a specific white fish at the fucking hospital and he fucking wants that goddamn tilapia. Yeah, junkies, junkies are, it's amazing that energy. I wonder if there's. Put that to anything else. Yeah. I mean, you. You know, I mean, you figure cancer. Robert Downey Jr. was a was a full blown junkie, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you go when he, because that 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 energy is overwhelming. I'm so glad I didn't get blessed. I didn't get cursed with the junkie. Yeah, like with like real junkie. I mean, I I got it like with cigars and booze and 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 weed, but like not like real junkie shit. Like where, like what's his name's? I have, I have a good friend whose sister was a junkie. And you, I mean, you, it was like you couldn't. There was a vacancy, mm -hmm. and, and and it's crazy. That's so fucking insane, man. I'm so blessed I didn't get that. I wonder if it's genetic. Oh, for sure. I think there's the gene, sure. Especially with alcoholism and things like that, for yeah. sure. Yeah, hell yeah. I was thinking about quit drinking. <laughs> I like that you were just thinking about. It. I was thinking about it. I was like, why? I, I got it. Well, if I don't ever have time to do it. Like, I don't have enough time to wrap my head around not drinking. And when we are on the road, it's like, it's like fucking, you're doing, every night you're getting in a bus and traveling, and, and you need something to pull it down. I wish I was more into marijuana. Yeah. Edibles don't just put you there. So what I was doing was I would have a drink, and then right before I went to bed, I'd eat an edible. And I was sleeping like a dead man. Like, I was sleeping. Depression. So... <laughs> soundly but when i was waking up i could not i was still very high oh really yeah and i was like yeah you don't want that like this <laughs> and i couldn't turn it over and with alcohol like last night i i i, I we we got it we slept two hours and then the bus dropped us off at o'hare we got at no hair at 5 a.m we literally went to bed at like three on the plane at seven cocktails at o'hare that is the fucking o'hare's the goat is cocktails it? at five yes and you can walk around with them 
Is so, that right? You can oh, walk through uh, the air. Uh, <laughs> get a fucking couple of roadies. I didn't, I didn't know take that. a walk. <laughs> sleeper beds. Drank on the plane. All of us got here, passed out, came back. Team meeting. Bottle of wine. Bottle of wine at home with Leanne. Woke up rough. I mean, back hurt. Like fucking rough. Killed a workout. Ran three miles. Road. Did kettlebells. And uh, and it goes away. It goes away entirely. I have no hangover whatsoever. So if I really, but I, I can't do that with marijuana. I can't do that with Xanax either. Listen, I'm I'm going to just tell you, I worry about you a lot because the fact, like, forget about that you don't, we'll come back to my shit. The, the, forget about the fact that you don't get a hangover or that you can make the hangover go away and all that shit. It's the liver that I worry about. Oh, well, I'm, I'm on Because the it. amount of alcohol and how you handle it has how you handle alcohol has no I, no bearing on the amount the liver's taken in there right whether you can drink 12 beers and walk straight line or you're passed out it doesn't yeah. matter your liver's hitting it so a friend of mine uh um, oh, i don't want to hear the story you can t- change the subject so anyway get <laughs> your liver checked <laughs> I, do, I do i do i do i do get it I do. checked i do i just got blood work done you, you yeah. absolutely do liver yeah. tests oh 100 right. it's the to, one dude. thing i do you need i go to, to the cardiologist every six months are you okay with liver yeah yeah, yeah we're right. fine they were All a little right. high this last time this was the first time they were out of the range but that's why i started testosterone because because uh, why testosterone according to my cardiologist and the people that i got it through um repairs fatty liver okay and so that's why I'm on testosterone. I got and and but yeah, I'm hyper aware of of my liver numbers because I'm also on atorvastatin, which is really shitty for your Me liver. Too. I'm on uh, blood th- uh, thinners. I'm on blood pressure. You're on medicine. blood thinners. Yeah. Why are you on blood thinners? Just don't want to have a stroke. That was a preemptive thing for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is well, that had, running your family? I had so I've gotten all the. God, this is what happened to us. We used to be so cool on podcasts, and now we're talking about CT scans Dying. and. I know. I think about it all dying. the time. I think about it all <laughs> dying, the fucking time. Dude, we're talking That's about all I think dying. about. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't. I journal every morning, and I start with I'm grateful for my health and my, my daughters. Oh. Every fucking day for years. And then this shit still happens. And I'm like, all right, well, there's a message to take away from this. Am I not appreciating life enough? I, I mean, they kept telling me you're one of the most um, – aware patients we've had because i'm like and the other thing too is you don't see the same nurse it's they're coming in from pomona they're coming in from fucking pasadena they're it's they're guns for hire now so every time someone's got to come in and learn what they got to give you all this shit yeah so it's a sunday and they tell me all right you've been laying down straight now for eight nine days you can't leave until you pass a physical fitness test. And all it entails is is um, walking on a walker. And then I have to do a stairs test because I have steps going up into my home, which I got in that place, I don't know how many years ago. Thank fucking God I have stairs. Why? I'll tell you why. So Sunday comes and they're like, all right, you need to sit up. And look, you could be dizzy. You could be, you've been, your body's been laying on itself for eight, nine days. So I sit up and I'm fucked up. I'm dizzy as shit. Total like bed rest. And this it. is because of the back. Yep. So they're like, all right, we're not doing it today. And I'm like, fuck, that was Saturday. Excuse me. I'm like, God damn. So Sunday they come back and I get up and I'm fine. And he's like, all right, take this walker. And I mean, senior citizen circle. And I do it. And he's like, that's fucking awesome. And I, I'm laughing. And he's like, we're done for the day. I'm like, dude, come on. He goes, I'm serious. You can overdo it. He said, yesterday, you couldn't even get up out of the bed. Today, you just walked a circle. And I'm telling you, in my world, that's a big deal. And I was like, okay, I'll listen to you. He goes, tomorrow, you have to pass the stairs test, and then you can go home. And I'm like, great. So tomorrow comes. It's MLK Day. And Sunday night. They tell me we're gonna put you in your own room, and I'm like, "Why? I'm leaving tomorrow." I hope that 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 was foreshadowing something black happening. <laughs> Interesting, you say that. So um, I'm gonna make it work. So I'm like, "Just leave me here. I'm going home tomorrow. Like, don't transfer me." And they're like, "No, we're putting you in your own room." So I'm like, "All right, maybe I'll get a good. I don't have to listen to this tilapia asshole." Because all night. He, by the way, if you've ever been in a hospital, there's always one of these. And there was one yeah. when they moved me up to this guy. Oh, all night, all night. That's what he would do until really? you gave him his medicine. Oh, and I'm like, fuck. You can't. 
So they move me into my own room with a door that shuts. And again, I'm just in general population the whole fucking time. I get in my own room. I go to bed. I wake up in the morning. And they dope me full of fucking drugs. And I, I, I tell them, don't do that. So then this physical occupational therapist, excuse me, comes in. And she, I'm like, look, I really want to go home. And they just loaded me up with drugs. Will you come back at noon so I can do this test without being fucked up? Because I want to pass it. I want to get you the in fuck pain? out of here. Yeah, I'm in a ton of pain. So um, she's like, okay, I'll come back at noon. She goes, how do you feel? And I go, I just feel weird today. I don't know. I feel weird. She's like, okay, do you want to do this? I got 100% dudes and get the hell out of here. She comes back at noon and she brings this little step stool. And she makes me walk up like this and down normal. And then she goes, all right, now I want you to go up sideways like you're holding on to a rail. And I go, okay. She goes, how do you feel? I go, the stairs are no problem. I just feel weird. She's like, are you all right? You want to do this? I go, yeah, I want to go home. So I go up and down the stairs. And I'm telling you, it's like sitcom time. And she said, Mr. Sickler is your occupational therapist. I can tell you that you have passed a necessary test to go home today. And then I fucking collapsed on my bed. Swear to God. She goes, are you okay? I said, I'm clotting. She goes, what? I said, I am clotting. And she calls the doctor. He comes in. He's like, what's going on? I said, I'm clotting. I know I'm clotting. This has happened before. I told you guys not to let this happen. I, what do you feel? I said, I feel three elephants sitting on my chest. He goes, okay, keep talking to me. You might be having a heart attack. I said, oh, my God. I hadn't even thought of that. I go, oh, my God. What? <laughs> and uh, he texts my blood pressure. You could also be gay. Listen, there's a lot going <laughs> listen, on. Listen, we'll get to there's that. There's a lot going on. Are you trans? Okay, hold on. He's either having a heart attack. He's gay. But you might have AIDS, man. This is bad. This is really bad. That's the kind of shit they're throwing at you. You're just like, ah, God. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, keep talking to me. And then I go, oh, no. He goes, what? I go, here comes heart attack 101. And boom, the pain in my left jaw down the no, arm. No, no, no. He goes, you might be having a heart attack and clotting. And I blacked out. That was it. That's where I should have died. That's where death was right there. Shut the fuck up. And the funny thing is with going no back to. Love, with no one you love around you. That fucks me up. That fucks me up really bad. I want people to, like, oh, yeah. Like, no. I can't. You don't get the pick. Yeah, dude. All right, maybe I'm going to quit drinking. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. So going back to jokingly the black thing. So I'm telling you that morning, I wake up before they give me the drugs and stuff. And there's a black. I'm blacking out. I'm blacking out. It's MLK Day. <laughs> it's natural. It's natural. I, I did black out on them. <laughs> you blacked out on them. <laughs> I did. <laughs> blacked out on MLK I blacked Day. out on MLK Day. <laughs> so uh, before all this shit hits the fan, I wake up and there's a figure at the foot of the bed, a black figure. It does. I there's no detail, but it has a human silhouette, and this fucking thing touches the toe, big toe of my right foot, and just jiggles it a little bit. And then it fucking moves off like this and gone. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And then boom, all this shit happens. And I don't know if it was death just coming to be like, hey, man. Or if it was somebody like, listen, we're here for you. But <laughs> it's about to get fucking dicey up in this yeah. motherfucker. And um, I wake up. I come to and there's this nurse standing over me. And I mean, I knew. I wasn't going home, but what came out of my mouth was, am I still going home today? And she's like, your discharge has been canceled. And I'm like, what happened to me? And now they're rushing me to CT scans and everything. And when I finally get settled, they come in and they tell me that I did not have a heart attack, but my heart is now, it's swelled. It's now swollen. And your, your heart's supposed to pump two thirds left and one third right, but mine's going 50, 50. And it's doing that because I also have, again, I thought I had a clot. I have massive pulmonary embolisms covering both clots. And I'm like, what? They're like, you should have died today. Like, you don't understand. I, I get it. Like, if I would have passed that stupid. Also, it's it also like so many things. It's. I've never been happier to fail a test in my fucking life. Yeah. I, I passed that test a day earlier. I'm home. Oh, and I say, hey, I, and dead. I call 911, and they go, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't get it. Like, they go, the hospital where you had your daughter, 
great hospital to have a kid. But they sent you home last time. This hospital happens to have a program that deals exactly with what you're dealing with. However, you come in with this outlier factor five thing, and now you're basically, a, I'm, this is my words, case study for them because they are super intrigued by you and they want to make sure you fucking live. So now I go, they're like, fuck your back. Now I've got a, uh, so from the spinal surgeon, I have a pulmonologist, I have a cardiologist, I have a hematologist, and they have an oncologist coming to see me. Just not because I have cancer. He's like, you do not have cancer, but it's a blood disorder. So I want to work with you as well. Like, you can't fucking leave this hospital until every person, there's like 11 of them on this team says you can go home. And I was like, great. Great, because if 10 of you say I can go, but one of you says I can't, I want to know what the fuck that guy or yeah, that lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. What are you seeing shut the that fuck you don't up. fucking like? So they tell me that. Then they say this one, and they're like, you know, you need it's 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 really a scary time for you right now. You could stroke, and I was like, stop. I didn't even consider stroke, Bert. Bert, I didn't even consider the stroke. And this I was is, like, stop. This is giving me so much anxiety. I had two rules in my room. Don't tell me any more shit that could happen to me. And don't tell me I'm going home tomorrow anymore. Yeah. You're not allowed. Because every time it was tomorrow, it was two more days. And it's two more days because if they see something they don't like, you got to fast. You got to fast for 12 hours. And then they take the blood. And that takes a fuck. So it's a two-day thing, Christ. right? So I wake up to that. They tell me that I, I, three different surgeons come in and they're like, you should have died today. Like, you don't even understand. Like, not just a hospital. This one on mm -hmm. earth saved your life. Like, you, you shouldn't even be here. Your numbers are stupid. You shouldn't be here. One surgeon, and every day this guy's coming by to tell me, hey, you should be going home tomorrow. He's checking the shit. This guy comes in. He's crying. I go, you can't be crying for me, dude. This is not how this is supposed to work. And he's like, every surgeon has one patient they remember forever. I go, get the fuck out of here, dude. Do not. Don't tell me I'm the one. He's like, you are the one. I'm like, come on, dude. Tell me what, what number two is. Yeah, who's the guy before me? He goes, okay. He said, same thing happened to another guy. He's on bed rest for a while, and they're putting him on the, the pain meds, and he hadn't shit. Now, he hadn't, I, and I knew, I didn't shit for over two weeks. And, yeah, and I'm regular, and I didn't shit for over two weeks. This guy doesn't shit for almost a month. And now he's about to get out and he's driving from Cedars to Fresno, right? It's a few hours. And the surgeon's telling him, I don't want to release you until you take a shit. Like, you're going to fucking, you haven't gone in a month. Yeah. I'm not comfortable telling you, you can go until you do that. You got to drive. Guy's like, nah, I got to get out of here. He's like, again, you can leave on your own, but I'm not signing you out. Yeah. Dude walks out of the room just into the little area where the other rooms are and fucking collapses. And they call the surgeon. He said, get an ultrasound on his stomach right away. Dude's abs ripped open from shit. And now he's, now he's septic. And and, oh, now dude, he's right back in the to hospital. My, that happened to an ex-girlfriend of mine's mom, I think. I think that's what happened. But that once that happens, that's really fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's not good. No, and all that shit's coursing through your body and blood. Like, you're fucking... So then you're going right back to the hospital. I was like, how's that guy not number one? Yeah. How's that not number one? Yeah. Literally number two, I get it. But how's that guy not fucking number one? With Mother's Day and Father's Day coming up, are you ready to give the best gift ever? I am telling you right now, I don't need my glasses. I don't need to read what I need to tell you to get her or him. A skylight frame. These frames are freaking awesome. We have, first of all, we have bought probably upwards of a hundred of them. I'm not even joking. We bought them for all our best friends, our campers, the group we hang out with. We bought them. George has got one in her dorm room. My parents have, have literally, we keep buying them for my parents and they put them all over their house. They're freaking awesome. You can preset them up with pictures already to go. Here's the beautiful thing about skylight frames. You just send a picture to an email address and it uploads to your skylight frame. It's gorgeous. It displays wonderful photos and it is, it has a beautiful touch to any home. You can get a 10 inch or a 15 inch touch screen and it's fun to swipe through the photos and even you can tap the heart and let the sender know that you liked them. It, it's really special and it is the greatest way to stay in touch. You can preload it with Favorite photos from a, for a special Mother's or Father's Day gift. Surprising what photos they didn't even know they had. And I'm telling you right now, this is the gift anyone is going to love. 
we have bought a hundred of these things and we keep gifting them and they're really easy to set up. Listen, if my mom can set it up, anyone in your family can set it up. Now as a special offer in time for Mother's Day and Father's Day, get 10% off. That's up to $30 off your frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash Burt. That's right. To get 10% off up to $30 off your purchase of a skylight frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash Burt. That's dot com slash Burt. Summer's coming or are you ready to unveil your beach bod? Manscaped is here to ensure your body is ready for the wild with their game-changing full body grooming and hygiene products. Don't be the guy this year at the beach with the Austin Power chest hair. If you grew some winter man tits, at least you can do is make sure they're hairless. It's time to get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT. Manscaped's dedicated to help you increase your confidence and level up your full body grooming game with the Performance Package 4.0. It comes with the Essential Lawnmower 4.0, waterproof, cordless body trimmer, and tons of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. I'm telling you right now, I did not have my Lawnmower 4.0 with the Skin Safe technology, and I'm down in Australia, and I had to buy something down here because the charging things are different, and I hacked up my balls. I am I get so confident with the lawnmower 4.0 that I'm just like, hey, here we go, here we go. And then you pull something else out and you're like blood everywhere. Inside your performance package, you're gonna find the Manscaped prop, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, and Crop Reviver Ball Toner, the anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, because we all know how painful chafing can be when you're wearing your bathing suit all day. Like I was yesterday and I'm about to today. No one like nose hair, so that's why the package also comes with Weed Whacker. You just, I was just pulling hair out of my face. I don't have my perform my my performance package. I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to get home and trim up all my body hairs. Having the right tools for grooming is essential. So do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. Trim your chesticles with the besticles. So now I'm laying there and they tell me that and this is where it gets fucking scary is they tell me, you know, I'm just it's weird because when you're in that situation, it's it's still now that I'm looking back on it. When you're in it, you're just sort of fighting, you know what I mean? And you don't really you don't take time to be like, I could fucking and they tell me like the next 48 hours are really crucial for you. Any one of these could pop you could get a new one you know so they tell me i'm i need to make phone calls and i have to call my daughter's mother and tell her because she's like what the fuck is happening to you i'm like i don't know i came in for back surgery and now i've clotted and they're telling me that i could die and i'm calling you to talk to you about life insurance I'm calling you to talk to you about my will let you know like this is what happens yeah God, we're, I, feel, I can't I feel see like, my daughter. I feel like we're too young to deal with this shit. We are. I feel like this isn't stuff. That's fucking insane. That's fucking insane. What? What? Uh, you checked so many people. I had so much love. You checked on me. Mike Duffy was in bro, there. I, I Daniel found out. Kirk I found out late. There. Tom called me. I found out late. Christina, everybody. It was so nice. Everybody checking on us. Burn. I mean, I can't. I don't, I, there's so many people that that just hit me up. And Steve Byrne was great. I mean, there's so many. Joe Coy offered to pay for my medical bills. I'm like, dude. I would have taken that. I should have. He's got so much money. Much he has this. so much fucking money. He said he that so I got money, it right. He got, I got he got, it. Like his son's. <laughs> Are like working for him, so I don't have to pay for his son. No child support. Yeah, fucking not married. God, fucking is liquid. Yeah, liquid. liquid. I would love to be a right. divorced dad. It'd be so much fun. <laughs> so much money. Fucking have a house in Malibu. The girls come down once. So I see my kids once a week. That'd be great. <laughs> once a week. Maybe once a month. Let Leanne do all the heavy lifting. So they <sighs> they tell me I'm stuck here now. And my back is non-existent. We're going to do this to save your life. We'll get to your back when we get to your fucking back. And the problem is also, like, I got to lay on this injury. That You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's so stupid. And, man, I'm in there. And, Bert, I'm telling you, they put the Dilaudid back in my fucking shit again. And I'm having wild nightmares. 
I mean, oh. I'm seeing dudes laser my eyeballs out over in Old North Hollywood by the tram station. I can hear them walking on the dirt and it's crunching. Oh my God. These people, I mean, if you could have got in my head, it would have been sci-fi hits all over the fucking place. And there's another lady and she's, oh, all day long. That's the thing that's killing me. Another one. I, I saw can't rest. I saw a woman uh, die uh, in, um, where was I? I was in New Jersey, I think. Right outside um, Action Park. I, I saw that. <laughs> I, I, saw, I blew out my did testicle. Did you go there? Yeah. You blew out your what? Testicle. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Action Park? At Action Park, Why man. didn't that make the fucking film? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, that was... That was <laughs> Somebody blowing their ball bag out should have definitely been in that documentary. That was the funniest. I... I <laughs> The, I mean, the, the park is not well thought out at all. Not at all. It, it really yeah. is not. I mean, they have a fucking, they have a, what is it, 10 meter dive? Like, that, that's really fucking high. Uh, type in Action Park, and I'll show you this. I was on a slide in Action Park, and. Uh, and what do you mean? It's, it's, it's a 10 meter slide. So, you, so you, you slide, and then you fall off at like 10 meters. And you just fall on your oh, back. Drop. Ten, yeah, you drop 10 meters. Oh, shit. Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> and so I Look landed on my testicle. You landed on it? Oh, I landed dude, on my testicle and it, and it exploded. What it do you like, mean? It got like the size of a lemon. It was no. huge. It was huge. Bert, how old are you? This was, uh, I was like 42. No, you're in your 40s? 44. <laughs> yeah. you to say a teenager. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I thought I you were a, for sure yeah. gonna say high school. I posted, or hey, I posted a picture of my testicle <laughs> online one time. Wait, Type your in nuts online? The Bert's swollen testicle, nuts online? Yeah. I want to see it. I this is when it was better. It. Get the fuck out Wait, of here. Where's my testicle? <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. That's oh, where? It. In the in the picture of that in in uh, the bunny. In, no, 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 no. Yeah, there. That's my testicle. No. Yeah. That looks like a chicken nugget, dude. Yeah. It. It rub it rubbed it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I go in. You just fucking what? Your body no, weight hit on I it or something? No, I landed on my testicle. Oh, and the God, second I did, dude. I just felt searing pain. I was like, oh, everywhere. God, this isn't good. Oh, my, it dude, was my burning. Leg. My nut was burning. <laughs> What's crazy is Action Park is run. Uh, uh, no slight to the people at Action Park. I think it's okay to slight them. There's people that have died at it Action Park. It is run <laughs> by a by a group of morons. Like. <laughs> And so yeah. they, but they, they have some rules. And so they said, um, I said, I'm, I'm going to need to go to the hospital. And they said, well, first we need to run process you through our, uh, our system. If you've been hurt, just to cover our end. And I went, okay. And they said, well, we're going to send uh, two of the heads, uh, head medics in here to take a look at the affected area. I said, it's my testicle. And I said, okay. And they send in two 16 year old girls. No. Who work in the water park. Two 16 year old girls. Under age girls. I said, Jackie, Jerry, come here. I said, I said, dumb man. I said, turn on the camera right now because I'm going to tell them I don't want them to do this, but they're going to insist, but I want this all filmed. This girl has not, I don't know if she'd seen a guy naked up front. She definitely has not seen a 44 year old dude naked and with a text school that looks like this. Yeah. So she comes in. And she's a little, little, uh, you know, like almost like a gymnast energy, like very aggressive, but not all that in shape. And she's like, okay, sir, I'll need to see the affected area. I said, it's my testicle. And she goes, I know. I said, you're going to see my dick and balls. And she went, I'm fine with that. This is a, this is a procedure. Let's see it. So I pull my dick and balls no. out and she goes to a 16 year old. She goes, oh my, oh my God, <laughs> you need to go to a hospital and walked out. And, and I guess we you have just a, got traumatized for <laughs> we life. have we have footage of all of it i go i do not want to show you my day. she goes sir she was being really cunty sir i'll need to see the affected area i'm gonna and, see your cuntiness with <laughs> this ball back. i was like all right here you go and by the way i don't look good naked to begin with you let alone <gasps> let, and it's cold so my dick's tiny my balls are huge this is not a time you need to impress anyone with the size of your dick oh right man here. this is a medical emergency i couldn't see my balls because i'm so fat so I had to have them. I had a monitor, and they were shooting my balls with the camera so I could see them because I couldn't see my balls. So then we go to the hospital. My blood pressure is like 170 over 110. Damn. Like it's high. And so they won't 
did, they won't release me. So they say I'm going to stroke out. So I'm like, hold on. I go, if you tell me I, I can't leave until my blood pressure is low, I'm going to be here all fucking night. And they go, yeah, you're going to be spending the night here. In the hallway is an old woman, maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 90 because that's the way she looked. But she was very clear and she was dying. And she was letting me know that she was dying and that there was no one to, with her, that no one loves her. She's she telling you this? She's telling me this. Jesus Christ. And, uh, my Two blood pressure, traumas back to my back. My blood pressure. And, we're, and we're, they put me in the room, then they pulled me out, and I'm sitting in a hallway with her. And I'm and I I don't I mean I would love to say that I was like con, con, condoling her, but I, I don't know I don't remember. All I know is I wanted to get a Xanax out of my backpack because I was like that'll get my blood. I'm like this is the worst experience I've ever had in my life, and I just sat next to this woman who just talked openly about death and about her life, and I and it was and I'm like. I'm like fucking spinning out of control. Do you remember anything about it that she said? Does anything she, stick with you? The, all I remember is that she was alone. No one, no one that loved her was there. She was alone. I'm dying alone. And I was like, <sighs> yeah, dude, that's what you think about. You're like, wow, I have love, but none of it's here. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking that it stinks that that's my sister had a heart, heart in, incident. Her heart rate got up to like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sure I'm going to say the number wrong. But like 220 beats per minute. It was when they came, when the ambulance came in, they were like, hey, you know, we're just checking in, you know, and my sister Cardi's like, I think I'm having, I think I'm dying. I think I'm having a heart attack. My heart's racing. And they're like, it's fine. It's fine. You're going to be fine. And then they, and one of the guys like, hey, you're the machine. And I was like, hey, what's up? And then they, real quick, he goes, her heart rate's 250, 230. Uh, well, okay. Uh, and then they start, they, you realize how serious it gets. But there is a weird thing in those moments where there's a calmness that comes over you where you're like, we're, at least I know we're safe. Like we got all these people around. That's what That was my fear when I left the hospital. I was like, I don't have a button to push where a team comes in. I yeah. got to tell you this because you're going to get a kick out of this. So I'm... You know, you're. I'm, that's my lowest. It's the lowest I've ever been. I'm on my back for a month. Like I don't. I, I didn't get up higher than thirty degrees for a month. I, yeah. When I got home and rolled to my side, I cried. I hadn't. I hadn't moved. I've yeah. been just literally. So this one surgeon who was fucking awesome comes in and he's having real talks with me, and I'm like, look, you know, is this the end of marijuana? I smoke. He's like, you can smoke marijuana. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't smoke cigars. Don't vape. No alcohol. You're on blood thinners. <laughs> but you can smoke marijuana. And I'm like, wow. I go, I can't fly though, huh? He goes, you can fly. And I'm like, how? I can't get over all this. And they're telling me that it doesn't affect the, you have to rock with what you have and it goes away when it goes away. So you still have the embolisms in at the time? Yeah, I still have them now. They said it could take a, they're so big. It said it could take a year for them to go away. So I live with them. And I just flew to Austin and everything. That was my first test in New York. That must have been a fun flight. So this fuck, it was so much anxiety, but I was still- You a more nervous flyer? <laughs> I'm afraid my chest is going to explode. <laughs> I might get all over you, guy. I um, The doctor says to me, he goes, he knew how I was feeling. He goes, listen, you did nothing wrong. He goes, your friend who played basketball, break his arm. I go, first of all, oh my God, how do you know who I am and how do you know he's my friend? He goes, let's just say my cousin's a fan of comedy. I, or my brother is a fan of comedy. I go, okay. He goes, he, stupid, funny. <laughs> But stupid. You did nothing wrong. Don't beat yourself up. And I go, okay, thank you, dude. I said, by the way, you can come to any motherfucking comedy show. You ever want to come God, to the comedy your store? Friend, be the up. big fat one. <laughs> the big fat one with the Still juicy the lips. The favorite part of all that is your when uh, when you do the gentle, just the, the the way you just gently set it back over kills me too. <laughs> he the best is when when he we were in the hospital and uh the guy comes in, doctor comes in, doctor's in great shape. He goes, so how did this happen? And Tom goes, we were playing basketball. And he goes, why would two old fat guys play basketball? <laughs> and I looked at him, and I was like, it's a great question. And he was like, man, you, you can't be playing basketball. And Tom just played basketball again. Yeah, I know. Fucking idiot. Um, He's in great shape now, though. Yeah, he is. He looks great. His, his, his uh, I'm, I'm envious of his, of... This isn't going to sound right, but I'm envious of his life right now 
because he's got young kids. He's in great shape. He's in love. They're in a new city. They're meeting new friends. I go, that would be fun. I feel like he's at the beginning of life. And I feel like my George just came home from college. Isla's going to college. We think maybe, maybe she should just be a DJ and a beefa. <laughs> but like, uh, but like, I feel like all the fun that he's about to have is just starting even though he's an old dad. Yeah, but it's a book. This is a chapter. That's all. It's not the yeah. book. You're in a different chapter. I'm in a different chapter. Right? You are. I mean, you. Uh, so uh, who was it? Just I just had on the other day. Um, oh, Sean Patton. Oh, he's he so goes. Good. Are you going on the Burt cruise? I said, Hell no! I'm not going on the <laughs> Burt cruise, man. I can't. I couldn't hang for half a day on the Burt cruise. Oh. But I'm saying you're doing all these different things. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys each have your own. You both look. Both of you have changed the fucking game. None of our heroes were flying in private jets or taking fucking tour buses everywhere, selling out arenas and stadiums and all that shit. None of our comedy heroes did that. None of it. You it's guys kind of have hacked the system. Y'all, so many of you have done it now. Joe Coy, Andrew Schultz, Rogan, all you guys. And it's really fucking inspiring. But it also shows that it works. That formula works. So fuck the industry. I mean, there used to be a network called Comedy Central that would tell you you weren't funny enough to be on their network, and we're all still here, and they're gone. Isn't that crazy? They're gone. They're a production company. I have, I, I think, I've thought, I recently thought, I was thinking about the people that told me to quit comedy. Um, And I don't mean this as like a victory dance, but like, but like the the guys that ran comedy clubs that told me that I should not do comedy. And I, I just go, how silly, how silly that statement is. I've, n- I've never told anyone not to do comedy. Cause it, I, you don't do comedy. No one's doing, man, I, that's probably inaccurate, but I didn't start doing comedy for money. Like I started doing comedy and I was like, I hope there's money. There's no, I had no insight that I would be, doing comedy the way I am now. I never thought in a million fucking years that I'd be doing, oh, I mean, it is the dumbest statement if I said, oh, I, I knew I'd be doing arenas. No one did an arena. Dice Clay did an arena. That was it. Also, imagine how popular he had to be back in the day of no social media that you did arenas off of a cassette. Dude, off a cassette. I mean. A cassette. Now you look at it. I mean, what is it? Me, Joe Coy, Tom, Joe. I counted this. Joe, that's for uh, Chappelle. Chappelle. Um, that are doing arenas. Yep. Hold on. Um, uh, Burr. Burr's um, doing arena. Burr's doing fucking stadiums. Um, Fluffy. Fluffy. Um, Sebastian. Sebastian. There's like 10. There's like two more. I mean, Chappelle. Are we? Yeah. 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 Rock. And Chris Rock. Yeah. That's fucking at least ten, 10. There was one. Eddie Murphy did Madison Square Garden and whatever. Think but, about but, dudes doing theaters now. I oh, mean, there's so many. Th- Mulaney. I mean, so many. Mulaney so probably many. is probably do doing arenas. Yeah, there's a lot right. of people that don't do arenas that, that Russell are. Russell Peters is, is arenas. Russell Peters. Yeah. It's, there's like about 12. Uh, Taylor Tomlinson should be doing arenas, but she yeah. just doesn't want to. She'd rather do a theater. She'd rather stay in theater. She likes the energy. And there's a lot to that argument. There's It's a lot more work. Um, I think. I don't know. It's a lot more work. I'll tell you what, my overhead right now is fucking through the goddamn roof. I mean, I, I have so many. I have so many people that I employ. It's fucking insane. I mean, I, I showed it to my dad when I did the Emily Arena in Tampa. And my dad's like, wow, buddy. Sold it out. And I go, hold on. Now, you want me to give you a little anxiety? And he says, sure. I said, I want, I want you to realize this. Anyone that you see in here I'm paying their salary for the night. I go, anything you see, I brought with me. I see, see those three semis? Those are mine. He's like, what? I said, and they're filled with that stage. I rent that stage. I rent all this. I said, anyone you see backstage, I'm paying. My dad all of a sudden just got overwhelmed. He's like, how the fuck can you make any money? <laughs> I go, well, you're selling out an arena. I mean, it's an, it's like, imagine, imagine the overhead when a hockey team comes yeah, in. You and then you got to pay all the get. hockey players. I mean, if there was a way to increase merch, that's how those hockey teams really make money is merch. The merch. If you could step it's up your merch. It's wild to me that just because you go up to a theater or an arena that you have to give a cut of that to this building. That's wild to me that that's a oh, standard thing. Oh, and there are, thing. Buildings that, there are buildings that get that are notoriously expensive. 
Like the premier buildings can be like, nah, we want more. Yeah, Tom was telling me like the difference between a Radio City Music Hall is more about the status than really because it's not a good, it's, it's more expensive and everything. It's way else. more expensive yeah, because of who they are. Yeah, and so, I mean, Tom did the United Center in mm -hmm. Chicago. Yeah. Trust me when I say the the Bulls play there. The, when when you, those places, you know, the, the real fucking money is uh, like the Mullet Arena in Tempe. Tempe. Any of these fucking hockey arenas are. Those are the home runs. What are they like? Seventeen thousand, fifteen thousand. No, no. You can. I mean, there's some that are like seven thousand. Oh, okay. And those are great. The Mullet Arena is five thousand. I did the one in Chicago with them. It was ten thousand, I think. Yeah. And it was. It felt smaller than I thought it would, which was crazy to 10, me. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. And I was. Able, I, I, I got them out there, and I was like, "Show me, like, where do I? Where should I hit my eye line?" And like, you know, yeah. I, I also. I've never been one of those people that's just happy to be there. Like, I really pay attention because in my mind, I'm going to be there someday. And when I get there, I want to be familiar with it. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish I had had, I wish I had done. Yeah, but you had no one to pave that way. You yeah. guys are the ones that we didn't are even fucking have, trailblaze. And I'm just walking through the fucking trail. When we, when Tom and I, Tom and I opened for a guy for a long time that was, uh, that was like our mentor, so to speak. And uh, he never even did a theater when we knew him. Like he just did clubs. So mm -hmm. we, all, my only frame of reference was clubs. Right. I didn't want to do theaters because of it. Because I was like, I don't know anyone doing theaters. And, and then the whole rub on theaters was it costs more. But you, if you can add shows, you can make more money. It was like, and I was just like, what the fuck? And then I did my first theater tour. And then I, as soon as I did a theater tour, I was like, oh, I'm done. This is it. This is what I want to do. I I wonder, I wonder if, um I, I sometimes wonder if, um, if I do like if I do a club run, like I would like to do a club run. When you have to do forty fucking shows, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just do like like I did. I did. Uh, I did Joe's comedy. Show. Oh yeah, I was just down there. And it was so much fun. It's the best. It's club a in the different world. art. He form. did it. It's a very different art form when you do a club than when you do an arena. Mm -hmm. it, it it's really crazy. Is that the the purest form of the art is the club? That's the purest form of the Agreed, art. Agreed. Yeah, but. If you're smart and you work it right, you can bring that club feeling to an arena and make it use. It's going to cost you a little more money. You got to put on a show. But uh, but that's the cool thing is everyone's sharing all the secrets now. You know, I talk, talk to a guy. I'm, I don't I can't say anything, but I talked to a guy who's about to do a big, a big, big tour. I was talking to his team explaining, you know, you should definitely look into getting a lighting package. It, it really makes it a little more intimate and you can you can just you can grab and run with these with these arenas where you just use their stage and they'll set it up but it's not great and there's and the screens aren't great sometimes but motherfucker you bring in it's a little more expensive but if you set up have a lighting designer come in and design a stage for you and design a set and a look and and get your own screens bring your own monitors and and bring your own cameraman your own audio bring and then have some cues set up then it really takes it takes a very unintimate thing and makes it very, very intimate. And so that's what I've done with this. I'm really like, uh, you know, you don't make as, you, you, you spend more money, but uh, I can't believe we're talking about arenas. And this is like insane. This is insane. It's awesome. I mean, you know, when you, you guys hack the fucking system, that's why also why I'm like, you guys are out there doing movies and shit. I'm like, why do you want to fucking do all that? I don't know. Why do you want to do all that? I'm fucking. But if you want a racing team and shit, you gotta go fucking out. And do dude, all that. We, I have bit off so much more than I can chew. No, nah, on so many things. Like when you used to, like even just the racing team, and then Two Bear Sports Management. We're, we're, you know, like, and then by the way, there's sports. There's, there's, <laughs> big guys got fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I can't wait till you guys put a put a player with Florida State or uh, uh, or with Dion out that, in Colorado. That our goal is to uh, our goal would be to uh, shepherd the really talented dudes. There's this QB that I want to go to Florida State. So our goal would be, dude, if you're a fan, let's let us let us help you. <laughs> let's help you make Florida State better. Yeah, dude. Go out I to Colorado with so Dion. I can't, by the way, I can't believe you didn't know that Oreo hat was in place of Florida State for as long as it was there. Oh, I know. I know. I caught that. I watch you throw it off and say it stinks. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, by the way, 
I'm a, I'm, I am a huge Florida State fan. I did it on purpose. But my father was a big Florida State fan. My brothers, like, because Maryland just sucked. Football, yeah. they we, sucked. We, and was the Terps? Yeah, they, basketball, they were good. Yeah, but, basketball, but football, really good. they blew. Yeah. But they would put good players in the NFL. Boomer Sias and all that shit. Frank Reich. But um, the the logos of these hats, because you're a hat fan, I'm to me, and I'm, I know I'm biased. That cartoon bird is great. But that Milwaukee Brewers... It's the most creative. It. I didn't know. I always it thought it was a M and B. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a glove and a ball. And then probably in my teens, it hit me one day. I'm like, son of a bitch, that's M B. Yeah, and that Milwaukee Brewers is a great one. It's fucking insane. You know? Did you ever see? Did you ever see? They have a um a list of logos you could didn't know with hidden messages. Yeah, like, like the FedEx, FedEx has arrow, the arrow yeah, in it. Yeah, and uh, the KKK's one's interesting. <laughs> It's got, you a, know it's got a Jewish star of David in it. <laughs> <laughs> they just <laughs> I'll be I'll be honest and admit something. The, the KKK had merch before I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was the like, man, I gotta step my game. Wait, look, what's KKK merch? <laughs> I gotta buy Tom this, a birthday you're present. You're never getting this anywhere. KKK merch. Look, boys in the hood. <laughs> That's wait, is it, wait is Ghostbusters merch. looks yeah, they're look using like Ghostbusters. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Is that official? That's crazy. I Anybody would wear that? I don't think I've ever met anyone in the KKK. I did not meet this person. However, a girl I know, a friend of mine from high school, when she was in college, she went out on this date with this guy that lived out in the in the country in Maryland, and um. She said that they were going, they're in his pickup truck and they're driving out to go get a movie at Blockbuster. This is back when you did that shit, you know? Yeah. And as they're driving out, it's nighttime and she's sitting in the pickup truck. She's in the passenger seat. He's here and he's got the rifles hooked. You know, you ever know those guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah, drive yeah. around with them. Yeah. Here. And he sees a fucking deer and he stops and she's telling me this. He grabs the fucking rifle. <laughs> Puts it over across her out the window, shoots this fucking deer, right? I go, what? She goes, this is our second date. I go, so what What now? She goes, well, Blockbuster's over. He goes and gets the deer, throws it in the truck, and we're going back to his house so him and his dad can gut the thing. And when they go back, she goes downstairs with him in the basement, and the basement is fucking grand wizard shit. All kinds of shit. His dad is in the fucking clan. Shut up. Yeah, and she said she got the fuck out of there. She's like, all right, well, you guys do your deer thing and then never fucking fucked with him again. Oh, my like, God. Whoa, you saw that shit? She's like, it was there. I've met, I I would argue. You, I mean, Maryland, I've never even Maryland really met, like, clan. I met, I met racist people, mm -hmm. like, but not different, like, I've never really met like a like a like a I mean genuine racist that said stuff like oh I take that back I have I definitely have I definitely have, I so definitely I, have. it's an interesting conversation because you know racism there's all kinds of racism there's also ignorance yeah. I've never met anyone that did any harm to anyone of another race but I've met plenty of fucking people to talk racially about yeah. them How's I've, heard, that? I've heard people talk shit but black dudes too Oh, yeah. And Asian yeah. dudes. I've heard a lot of, I've heard it from everyone. I was very sheltered. I didn't realize until I moved to LA, like, I didn't know that blacks and Mexicans didn't like each other. I Do learned that working at a hotel. I was like, oh, man, you guys have beef. Do you remember there was a law? They were trying to pass some sort of law. I forget when it was, but it was like the first time that I realized there was an issue is they were, the like, KCAL 9 was going down. And asking black people what they thought about Mexicans, and they were just—I mean, it was like you would never air that if it was a white person <laughs> yeah, saying it. Yeah, You'd be yeah. like, "The <laughs> fuck!" And you would never say it, and there was no repercussion. Just a black dude and a white beater, just like I don't like them. Yeah, I, and I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it on Cake Out Nine. I'll say it on Cake Out Nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, also learned about Asian racism out here too because I I didn't grow up around a lot of Asian people. Oh, we didn't grow up. I didn't grow up with any Asian people. You know, and so I'm working with this guy who is Japanese. I mean, Japanese. I'm gonna tell you about this. Japanese. Japanese. So like, I know so much about Asian racism right now, uh, only because I'm I'm obsessed with World War II, and all, and how all that like the the uh, what was it the rape of Nanking, rape of I don't know. 
ping. I'm um, now it's just going to sound racist. <laughs> what is it? The rape of what? Nanjing. Okay. And, uh, and it was, uh, and, and, but you know, what's crazy. Japanese, the Japanese, I think took over Korea at a point. And, I didn't know this. That's interesting. And, what I'm about to say. Yeah. And, or it might've been, it's, it's right around world war two and America and everyone else is like, whoa, 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 whoa. You guys aren't white. You can't go in and colonize anyone. Only white people colonize. You're going to have to give that back. We'll, <laughs> and then they gave it to Russia. They're like, you can have it. You're white. You'll know what to do with it. Um, but yeah, Asian racism is fucking. Well, he was Japanese, and we had this beautiful Korean girl who worked with us. And, man, we would all be like, man, she's pretty. And he's like, she's a dog. And we're like, what? Like, you don't think she's pretty? He's like, no, she's Korean. She's a dog. We're like, whoa, wait, what's that all about? So then he explained that Japanese feel they're the superior race of the Asians and that the Koreans are the, I was like, what? There was so much of that shit. I got I, I, accidental racism or unintentional is my favorite. So, um, oh, no, no my, 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 hold on. My, my favorite, my I'm favorite, give you three my favorite, go ahead. My favorite is when someone that is woke says ra something racist and then they didn't realize they did it. That happened, that happened today. That happened today. I, I can't, I can't out anyone. I can out them, but you got to edit it out. Okay. Start beeping. One of the most woke people I have ever met in my entire life. Very cognizant of it. When I got Hitler's teacup was actually outraged, outraged. And I, I was like, it's a joke. It's not funny. And I go, okay, today we're watching uh, the chef show with, uh, it's edit, I mean, edit almost all of this out. Like just beep it. And so, no, 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 leave it in, but beep it. I go, yeah, that's uh, Roy Choi. She goes, uh, I think you're a little wrong on that. And I went, what? She goes, that's David Chang. I go, no, that's Roy Choi. And she goes, um, it's David Chang. And I go, ooh, are you being racist? And then she started panicking. They don't even look alike at all. <laughs> they don't even fucking kind of look alike. And so, and I could not stop laughing. She's she's done that a couple times where she'll, she is trying to be woke, but she'll say the, uh, 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 something that's a tad bit fucked up and it I makes me so excited because I say things fucked up all the time never to hurt anyone's feelings but I just say fucked up things and then I just go yeah I, you know I don't know what I'm uh, you know it's the best to witness it though wait tell me what your favorite all is alright so there's, I've got four of them actually so this uh, one time I'm working this uh, production job and it was right when Chipotle had come out at least got new and popular and and someone at lunch is like why don't we all go to Chipotle and someone's like what's Chipotle and this Asian girl goes <laughs> It's like, it's like Subway for Mexicans. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. You did not just say that. <laughs> but it always blows me up because I'm used to always hearing white people say racist yeah. shit. When I see another race say racist shit, I'm just, I like to sit back I'm like, here we go. Oh, dude, well, here the, best, go. the best is when, when you, when, when you would watch on ESPN when they give the mic to a football player. And they're like, what do you think about gay marriage? And they'd be like, no, man, I think it's a sin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think they're going to burn in hell. Yeah. And, and it was a black dude. Black dudes black dudes consistently have been a tad bit tone deaf to the LBGT community. And it is the, I, I, mean, I wish I could go into detail. I play about that gay shit. I know, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah I know. Like, uh, there was a guy, I can't say anyone's name because I don't want to out them. And, and, and I don't know they don't care. There's a guy I did a TV show with one time, and they wanted us to wear leather shorts. And he went off on a tirade about gays. Just because they were leather He's shorts. Like, I'm not no fucking. <laughs> and, and I was like, I was like, I was like, you're not allowed to say that. He's like, I'll say whatever the fuck I want. And I was like, okay. I go, but just giving you a heads up. There's like gay people that work on the show. Like they might be offended. And he was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, all never right. mind. Never mind. You're right. You're right. They don't, they don't have feelings. <laughs> Father's Day is around the corner. And one thing is for sure, dads have enough ties, enough tools, and baggy tees. This year, give dad your father figure, your mentor, a loved one, someone in your life, the gift of a looking good and feeling good 
with True Classic. From the guys who brought you the perfect fitting t-shirt, True Classic makes premium everyday essentials more affordable than ever. Whether you're shopping for yourself or looking for something they'll love, stress less this year with 25% off at trueclassic.com. Just use the word BERT at checkout. I'm telling you, these shirts are freaking awesome. They fit right around your arms, right around your shoulders, and they give you enough room around your belly. And here's the other thing. They've got way more than just uh, shirts. They've got active shirts. They've got shorts. They've got joggers. They're all moisture wicking and keep you dry, keep you comfortable so you can keep moving. Gifting can be hard. True Classics makes it easy and more affordable. They're so committed to their shirts fitting right that they even have a 100% risk-free guarantee and easy returns so you'll feel as good gifting it as they will wearing it. Premium quality without a premium price tag. That's True Classic difference. The True Classic is hooking up our listeners with an exclusive deal to help you get ahead on gifting. For a limited time only, get 25% off with the code BERT at trueclassic.com. That's 25% off with the code BERT plus... Free shipping included on purchases over $100. Hey, guys, I wanted to introduce you to my friend, Lacey. She is my trainer. Scoot down, Lacey. Scoot down, scoot down, scoot down. But more importantly, she is one of the co-owners of Caveman Coffee, and they have a sale right now. You get 25% off, Lacey. 25% 25% off. We've got nitro. We've got all kinds of roasts. Um, you can try our new mugs as well. Yep. So go to Caveman Coffee and use the code BERT for 25% off and get them while they last. Lacey? CavemanCoffeeCo.com. KBanCoffeeCo.com. One time, a buddy of mine, his brother's on the city bus in Jersey. He's sitting there by himself, and this black lady and this black guy get on. And he goes, hey, do you want me to get up so you guys can sit together? And the black guy goes, I don't know her. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did. Right when I had Georgia. Right when I had Georgia. <laughs> And then, was, he, and then was, she sat next to him. She had to sit next to him. He's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't shit, know her. Shit. I don't know her. I said, I was in Atlanta <laughs> doing the funny farm. And I was at the pool. And this uh, Asian lady had her two boys in the pool. And I was like, twins. It's got to be a lot. Oh, no. She goes, they're not even related. <laughs> <laughs> they're not even related. And I went. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are the odds? Oh, I did it. I did it the other day at a coffee shop. I go. Uh, I said. I said the the barista was a uh, was a, uh, if not transitioning, possibly could or might transition, or just looked like a mid transition human. And I said, uh, I he said oat milk or cream, and I said oat milk, but. A lot, please. And he poured. I go, thank you, sir. I mean, ma'am. And I did it so quick that everyone's like, you could have just stuck with one for a second. (laughs) Now you look, I went, sir, ma'am. I mean, and I go, I'm so sorry. And he goes, no, it's sir. It's fine. And I went, okay. All right, another one. This is our friend Eric Lundy. You might know Eric Lundy. He's in a Chinese restaurant one time. You know, in a, most Chinese restaurants, the uniform seems to be white shirt, black pants. Yeah. It just seems to be you know, this Asian guy's walking by with a white shirt and black pants, and he just leans out of his booth. He goes, excuse me, can I get a refill? And the guy's like, I don't fucking work here. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, I, I got a good one. Yeah. I got a good one. My buddy, keep his name. No, edit his name out. We live, moved to L.A. together, and it's just after Christmas. <laughs> and his mom got him a cool red fleece and we go to jerry's deli and we get out of the car and a white woman sees him and throws her keys to no. him because <laughs> they all the ballets wear red yeah. he goes i'm not fucking mexican and i go shut the fuck up and he goes god damn it and then we're sitting there and he goes why did you do that he goes the fleece he goes i fucking love this jacket we walk out of the restaurant and we're waiting for our car and another person gives him his keys he goes i gotta fucking throw this jacket away <laughs> Oh, my favorite one. I made this a YouTube video a while ago and Tosh put it on Tosh.0. This is it's based off of a real thing that happened to a friend of mine. So um, my younger brother and a buddy of ours are living back in this row home in Baltimore. And a friend of mine owns with them, goes back to visit. So obviously he stays at his place. Well, he happens, happens to, to walk up to the front door at the exact same time this delivery driver is walking up. 
is Asian dudes bringing food to there. Yeah. So just politely, he opens the door up for the guy. He's like, I got it for you. He opens the door up and he leans his head in and he just goes, hey, did you guys order some Chinese? And they just start laughing. And they're like, <laughs> nah, we got cheese steaks. This motherfucker just assumed that only Chinese people deliver Chinese food. You guys order Chinese? <laughs> and he uh. stood there, so my brother and our buddy just start counting their money slow. And he's just holding the door, standing there, and he's oh. like, you motherfucker. God and they're like, wait, it. wait, count it again, count it again. Okay, it's all there. And he's like, man, I'm sorry. No, we sorry. got cheese sticks. <laughs> God damn it. There's so much racism where it's like, or I, I, like I've seen my, I've seen older people do it, where they're trying to connect, but it's offensive. They're like, so wait, where are you from? And you're like, oh, fuck. Here we Can't go. Can't say that. Just don't say that. No, but you're really dark. Like where, like. What uh, part of the world? Yeah, what part of the world? I'm just curious. I want to know. And you got some fucking guy going. Baltimore. Yeah, from here. Yeah, man. from fucking here, motherfucker. Like that, that I understand that, but like the, the miscommunications are fucking. I have a joke that I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out if it deals with race at all. But there was a black chick at a um I was at uh I was at a um CBS getting my a Rite Aid getting my medication. I was on the road and I've had this happen a couple times with we with weird miscommunications real quick sorry that's good to know you can have if i'm out of blood thinner or something yeah. i can have cvs hit up a cvs and yeah. get that shit all yeah. right that's good to know i was hoping that would be the case and so this guy recognized me and he came over there's a black chick in front of me we were six feet apart and so she's in front of me <clears throat> white guy comes up recognizes me and like gives me a fist bump he's like hey dude i hope you have a fucking great day he's like keep killing it man and just walked away and then she goes why didn't he say anything to me? And I was like, huh? She was like, is that like some white guy thing? And I went, oh, no. And then I was going to tell her I'm famous, but I just went, I smile a lot. She was like, huh? I go, yeah, it happens to me all the time. Like, I smile a lot. And so people just come up and they just wish me good things. And she was like, oh. So then he goes up to the, she goes up to the counter and the dude behind the counter is a big guy with a beard. He looks around her and sees me and he goes, oh, I can't wait to wait on you, man. And she turns around smiling. She goes, I was smiling right then. <laughs> and then she followed me around the store, which is weird because usually we, we follow them. And so <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. With maybe. security. Yeah. Yeah, but we, she followed me around the store <laughs> and she was trying to figure out why that happened. And, uh, and that's the end of the story. It's, it's, another guy recognized me. Someone said it's Kool Aid, and she's like, "What it's the all fuck?" White is this? Dudes. It's all white dudes. It's all white dudes. Once, once you get recognized somewhere, and then at a store like that, like I go to a Shields, I walk into a Shields, and immediately, fucking, that's my demographic. If you work at a Shields, you know who the fuck I am. You are a huge fan of mine. If you work at a Shields, that is my demographic to a T. Fucking one of the. White dude manager's losing his hair, gets on the walkie. Shh, Bert Chrysler's in the store. Did they He's offering that? guns. Yeah. And then He's all of a sudden, guns. everyone, I, they found me a socks last time. And I was just trying to buy socks. I was taking so many pictures. I was like, I was like, but can you guys help me get socks? And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Shields, man. I, I'm That's my demographic. I don't know that's Shields. I don't know that store. Where was that? Been Shields? Mm -mm. Oh, oh, my God. Pull up Shields. What states are they in? Shields. Midwest? Uh, Omaha. Uh, uh, they're like dicks on steroids. Okay. They have a fucking Ferris wheel in them. They have. Really? Dude, go to Shields oh, Images. Yeah. Oh, man. This is they're like a mega fucking stores. Bass Pro Shops. Yeah, they're like dicks on steroids. Go There's to the no Ferris go, wheel right Go there. to the interiors. They have like Ferris wheel. They have all sporting, any sport you want. They're fucking amazing, man. They're like, they're, and my, it's my favorite place to go. As a kid, as a kid, if my dad and I had like a Saturday afternoon and we weren't doing anything, we'd go to a place called Sports Unlimited on uh, on Hillsboro. And it was a it was a sporting goods store. It's a really big sporting goods store. And it was fucking awesome. And we would go there all the fucking time and just walk around. It was like the funnest thing to do is like just take your time. Like a but you didn't even need to buy anything. Just walk around. To this day, and when I moved to LA, if I had time, free time, I'd go to Sports LA and I just walk around. I Go to a sporting goods store and it just calms me down. Me too. And I can walk around for fucking ever 
and I feel healthy. I feel good. I feel That's like what I do with the Bass Pro Shops. There's so much dude, to do. You can fish there. Bass, they have a shooting range in that motherfucker. They got an archery range. range, dude. Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop is 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 a little bit more wide of a net, in my opinion, because like I can get into like like going the knives in there. Mm -hmm. I always buy a knife if I go to any of these places. I wish we had like. I wish we could buy guns. Uh, my daughter's eight, and she's super into knives. She likes my knives. I'm like, you like knives, huh? She's like, yeah, oh, and smiles. I'm like, okay. Fucking Isla. We dropped George off at college, and Isla says uh, she needs a knife. I said, what? She goes, for protection, she needs a knife. So we buy George a knife, and then Isla goes, hey, can I get one? I was like, yeah, baby, whatever you want. She buys a knife with an eight-inch blade. A fucking ramp. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's like a fucking, it's, it's a good-looking knife. It was sleek and black, but it had an eight-inch blade. So I said to her the other day, she goes, I fucking lost my knife. I said, really? I said, where's the last time you remember having it? She goes, school. I go, you took it to school? She goes, yeah, protection. I go, baby, you go to an all-girls Catholic high school. What the fuck are you bringing a knife, an eight-inch blade to school? She <laughs> yeah. goes, you never know, Dad. You just got to be prepared. So And I'm like, it, it was a cool fucking knife, so I was I gotta buy her a new knife. We're going to see Cocaine Bear today. Are you really? Tonight, yeah. Leanne's got a big uh I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna drink tonight. I may not, but if, if I don't drink, I want to take a Xanax. But if I can't take a Xanax, because I gotta do Jared Logan Paul's podcast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if I take a Xanax, I'm not i I'm not available for like another day. I'm just like this. Huh? Yeah, those things make me black out. Yeah, I love them. I wish they were good for you. They're not. No. They're really not good for you. Like I will take I will take a quarter or like a half of a half I have half a milligrams. So I'll take a quarter of a milligram. Um I mean every blue moon. I don't take them very often. But man, it's the best feeling is when it kicks in and the world goes and it lands and it slows down and all your anxiety isn't there and you're like, "Oh yeah." I'm doing really good in life. That's shrooms, man. I was at Rogan's Club, uh, just like an appetizer on the table. There's these, they were, fuck, they look like shroom, like the roots of the goddamn thing. They were like, I'll show you a picture. They're like this thick, about this long. And people were just taking bites off and pulling pieces off of it and stuff. Really? And, and I was like, man, you guys are about to go out and do stand up on shrooms. I've done it smoking weed before. I've had alcohol. I mean, but I've, have you ever done stand up on shrooms? I have. And so they all were like, yeah. And I was like, how long? I've been in this 20 years and I haven't done any fucking. So I took some shrooms, had the best goddamn time. I had the worst time of my life. <laughs> I had the worst time of my life. Three shows in Dallas on a Saturday. Yeah, but how much did you do? I took I took enough, and then when I went home, shit well, got uh, wild. I never did. Colorful. I never did. I was never part of the fucking dr <laughs> the microdose community. I was like, you do drugs to feel them. Yeah. Like you don't like microdosing yeah. sounds great, but I never knew what you could just. I never knew you could do that. <laughs> right. You were called a pussy back then. <laughs> yeah, right. Eat you the were, whole fucking thing, you were bitch. A bitch. Yeah, yeah, you're a bitch if you didn't <laughs> take the whole fucking. If you were like, I think I'm just gonna take a little bit, so I barely feel it, but I feel good about myself. So we were. Uh, it was a big group. Of, it was a group of comics. And we're in Dallas. We do the first show. And someone says, I got mushrooms. And we're like, oh, fuck, yeah. So we're like, all right, we'll take them at the beginning of the second show. So maybe they'll kick in at the end, end of the second show. And then we're going to go over to the piano bar. So we all eat mushrooms. I get on stage to the second show. And my, I'm, I'm closing. And, 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 I'm, and they kick in. And I remember the, the, I was hyper-focused on the candles. The candles stood out like really bright and they were moving back and forth and flickering. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, thank God I only have to, I'm fucking doing 15 minutes and I'm done. We go back to the green room. I'm like, let's go over to the piano bar. And they're like, well, we got to be back at in 15. I go for what? And they go to the third show. I go, we have a third show. And they're like, you didn't know we had three shows tonight. And I was like, uh, uh. and I had, an, a, <laughs> I got on stage and I realized that my, as I get on stage, I make a joke about my daughter's, and I realize my daughters depend on my brain. This is the, the thought that goes oh, to make a living. And I'm now fucking with the chemistry of my brain. And what if something happens to me? What if I go schizophrenic and I can't perform anymore and I can't do stand up and I can't think clear? This is all happening while I'm trying to tell a joke about my daughters. And I have a full blown panic attack and a great fucking dude. One of the best. 
I'll say his name. You got to edit it out, but I want to keep it in. <laughs> you know, I want to keep it in so bad because he's the fucking best. One of the guys was, and he sees I'm struggling on stage, comes up on stage with me, helps me get through my set, brings some drinks. This is back when he was drinking and we all fucking, huh? And then he, I pull him aside and he, or he pulls me aside when we're done and I'm having a really bad trip. I'm having a panic attack. And he goes, what's going on? And I tell him and he goes, oh, I can tell you this right now, buddy. None of that shit's going to happen to you tonight. You know what we're going to do? We're going to race these mushrooms to the alcohol. I go, what? And he goes, yeah, we're going to drink so much alcohol. These mushrooms won't stand a goddamn chance. <laughs> Come on, let's go to this piano bar over there. And he goes, and we just started fucking murdering booze. And, and it worked? Fucking, yeah, and I fucking had a great night to turn the trip around. I had a blast. We ended up singing in the piano bar. I had a friend, um, Kevin Schatz, still friends to this day. Oh, great last mom. name. Um, back, was, it, was it Mar Margo Sh Margaret Schott? What was the woman who owned the? Marge Schott. Yeah, the Cincinnati yeah. Reds, the racist fucking <laughs> owner back then, Eric Davis and those guys. Um, this is the late '90s when I'm out here. I'm in college. It's '94, actually, not mid '90s. And um, the um, Pink Floyd's coming to the Rose Bowl, and we're like, "Fuck yeah, we're going to see Pink Floyd at the Rose." You don't even see concerts like that anymore. Yeah. And he goes, "This married couple I know is going to join us." I'm like, "Great." So we all get there and we're chilling outside, tailgating with everybody hanging out, smoking weed, and and she brings shrooms. And I just, I don't I just go, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna smoke weed and drink. And the three of them do shrooms. We go in and it's a great summer night in the Rose Bowl, and fucking the pigs have inflated and they're bouncing on the fucking sides, and the concerts kick ass. And I look over and here's Kevin here. And then the lady and her husband, that's the four of us going this way. And I look to my left and I hear this, Doom! and I look back over and Kevin's gone. And I look down and he's fucking collapsed, but it's bleacher seating. So his feet get locked under the bleacher in front and he goes down and the people behind him were scared. So instead of catching him, they move out of the way and his head hits the bleachers and he breaks out into this full on seizure and he's shaking and he's stuck under there and they're like is he epileptic i go i don't know and i'm screaming i'm i just start slapping the shit out of him oh yeah there's the pigs i'm punching them i'm fucking doing any i'm shaking them and he finally comes to and i go dude what the fuck i go are you okay he goes how long was i out i go how long you think you were out he goes like two minutes i go do like 10 15 seconds but you fucking had a seizure dude and the lady next to him who gave him the shrooms starts fucking melting down and she's got that $50 Pink Floyd concert shirt. She starts puking into it. Now her trip turns terrible. They have to fucking leave. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. You're sucking that shit up, bro. I've never seen someone have a bad trip like that on shrooms. I've seen it on acid. We were in, not on shrooms. We were in Amsterdam when I was in college. And this is when, this is when mushrooms, I, I want to say mushrooms were not legal, So, you, but you could get them. Mm -hmm. You could get everything. And we met these girls, and we all had weed, and we were all, like, cool with weed. And these girls were like, we got mushrooms. Do you guys want to eat mushrooms? Three of my friends were absolutely not going to do it, but one of my friends was going to, and I was going to if he was going to. So we meet up with these girls, and we're all smoking weed, and we're all laughing, and there, and the one girl goes, um, "We've already taken them," and we're like, "Really?" And she's like, "Yeah, we just took them." And the girl goes to the bathroom. She comes back, <laughs> and she goes, "Does my face look weird?" She is broken out in hives all over the fucking place. And we look, and the other two girls are now starting to break out in hives. And my buddy looks at me, he's like, "We're leaving." He's like, "Thanks God, we didn't eat mushrooms." <laughs> I mean. I, what the fuck? Oh, dude, I, there's. Uh, th by the way, all these bad drug interactions. I, there have been so many times where I go, "Why the fuck did I ever do drugs?" Because I've had, I've had so many. We went to a black strip club in Atlanta one time. It was right when Outkast, uh, "Everybody Move to the Back of the Bus" came out, and we all ate Molly. And I guess there was some quote unquote from the guy who sold us a titch of hair on. <laughs> and you gonna get a smidge of hair on. <laughs> And, and, and everyone started collapsing on the Molly. Everyone started collapsing and they were moving bodies to the back of the bus 
Like, no. Because we were in a tour bus and it was a batch party and they were just putting people in bunks and moving them to the back of the bus. And I went into the, I went, I had just gotten this medal, this St. Jude medal. And uh, I went into the bathroom in the tour bus and I, I was, I was like, I called St. Jude real quick. I was like, I was like, he was like, he was like Eric Stoltz in, in Pulp Fiction. Break all her, break all her. You calling me from a landline, motherfucker? So, um, and I was like, please don't let me go. And they're playing that song. Everybody move. And they're moving bodies to the back the of the bag bus. The bag of the bus. And uh, I was lucky. I don't know, for whatever, my half didn't have the touch of hair on in it. But man, that next day, everyone was like, what happened? Oh, I don't fucking, I'm, I hope my daughters never do drugs. Look, I mean, smoke weed. It's not safe to do drugs now. Uh -uh. I, listen, I already, my daughter's eight. I took her to Ocean City, Maryland this year. She was seven at the time, actually. And um, a friend of mine whose daughter, unfortunately, got a hot shot in Baltimore. She was 20 few years old, and it killed her. Um, and, it, you know, it wasn't gratuitous. She got, and I don't mean to sound funny, like, you know, a responsible amount of cocaine. They weren't fucking burying their faces. And she just got it personally to go home and, you know, have a little bump for the night. And it killed her. So when we when I see him, of course, I ask him how he's doing and everything. And my daughter's not dumb. Kids pick up everything. So she said, and we had we had flown into Philly and rented a car to drive down because um, it's the same distance as Baltimore to Ocean City. And we've got a long ride. And she's like, what happened to his daughter? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell you what happened to his daughter. So we had this whole fentanyl talk already and now there's a high school kid who just took a painkiller he was a football player i think i might have that wrong but in santa monica and he died um, fentanyl yeah and and oh, it wasn't man. like he wasn't out doing drugs or what you know what i mean this kid's in pain just got a a bum pill from somebody so I, i'm trying to tell her oh. like they're making them look like candy now yeah, like don't. i'm like listen you can't take and and i know it's it's a different world like cocaine wasn't killing you if you just did a bump back in the day, now one bump can fucking, it's over. Oh, it's, it's over. over. If you're a kid listening to this, listen to me. I'm I am so bummed that I made a living off of some, at times, not not really, but like about glamorizing the lifestyle that I did. And, and But things have changed. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, if you got a pill from someone, you kind of you knew it, it could have been a ton of different things right that's right and so that's right it, things were just different so like if you're a fucking 18 year old kid and you're listening to this man don't fucking just stay with weed and booze and, and, and by the shrooms. way and shrooms and, and just and i mean I, I wouldn't even fuck with acid i remember no. doing acid for the first time going no acid 10 more no hours coke of this. no molly I have 10 ecstasy, more fucking hours. whatever these things are yeah that's the way i felt too like i was like this is gonna be here for six more hours fuck this dude i get over it I mean, but also do half. That's I had that one of my sets. Yeah, uh, half my, is one of my where jokes. you start. Just take half. Just take half. Just take half. Don't be a hero. Just take half. And and also wait more than an hour. Don't Dude, be like it's only thirty minutes. Yeah, I, I we, wait another thirty. We had we um we were in the tour bus and look I'm, I'm once again I'm I mean it's marijuana so it's fine but this is another nightmare horror story about marijuana nightmare you just <laughs> it's so. That's how you say it. I got one out of you. I can't believe it. So, I can't believe we got a nightmare. Maddie Smith decides we're going to play edible roulette. And so she empties a bunch of edibles, gummies, into a, a thing of just regular gummies. And we all take one. Oh, I and see. And then we all eat one. And Pete, my assistant, immediately says, I have definitely had marijuana. This tastes like shit. And he goes, and I'm like, for real? And as I taste it, I go, wow, I've had edibles a lot. Never have I noticed the marijuana in them. Like I, but I was like, I got marijuana too. I go, how much are these? She goes, ten milligrams. And I was like, really? And she goes, yeah, there are a hundred of them in this bag, and they're all ten milligrams. And I'm, as she says that, I'm looking at the bag, and I go, it's so funny. Looks like there's, how did I ever put a hundred gummies in there? And then we all eat them. Everyone gets edibles randomly enough. And then Maddie realizes what she says, and she goes, I think I made a mistake. There were 10, 100 milligram edibles. <laughs> and I was like, Maddie, I go, we've all eaten 100 a milligrams of marijuana. It's a lot of marijuana. That's a lot. And she goes, uh, uh, oh. And Moses Storm is with us. He's chewing on a second one. No. And he's like, no. there are 100 milligrams. And we're like, oh my God. So then Maddie grabs another one and goes, I'll go in there with you, Moses. Peter, my assistant, goes, I'm going to bed immediately, gets in bed and, try, and tries to fall asleep. Good before. luck. Dude, I woke up in the middle of the night with. What I can only describe as a 
searing panic attack, like a searing. I was so, did you ever see that movie with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence where he wakes up in the time capsule when they're flying to Mars yeah, yeah. and then he decides to wake her up? I, I've, I was walking around the tour bus at four in the morning, hurtling through space, hurtling through space. Things were loud. Everything was loud. That's all I can remember. Everything was <laughs> shouting at me. And I was like, do I Chris Pratt someone and wake them up and welcome them in, into my hell so that it's my hell's shared with someone? Or do I just do what Chris Pratt should have done? And I uh, I just made myself another cocktail, uh, tried to listen to music, got back in my bunk, which was, uh, it's. I mean, being in a bunk that fucking high and you're like, and, and I was like, I kept believing we Those were flying bumps. well you're not you're sleeping in the back though aren't you no i sleep i made a, i made a big miscalculation and uh I, I i booked out a bunk that's like a crew bus so it's just bunks for everyone because oh, I, I wanted everyone Those to feel bunks like bunks are like coffins well i like them but i wanted everyone to feel i was asking everyone to stay in the bus so i didn't want someone to feel like well yeah you can ask us to stay in the bus give your own room right. we're all living in bunks i want us all to feel the same and so uh so i got that bus and so now but it's, it's not the best idea. It's fun. I mean, it's fun. When, what, what are you doing? Have you been on the road at all? Just with Tom's bus. Really? Oh, yeah. I have my... So I have a tour. Well, I have him because of my health shit. I had to yeah. wait to be able to fly and all that. But I'm starting my tour at the end of May. It's called the Ryan Sickler Live and Alive Tour. Live and Alive. And uh, you can just go to my website, ryansickler.com, for dates. I'm hitting um, Fort Wayne in May. I'm oh, going to there's Tulsa. a great strip club in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Oh, There's a great it. strip club. I think it's called Christie's. Christie's. No, no, no. Is it what? <laughs> it's a great strip club in Maine, in Fort Wayne, I, and it's the only place I that. Uh, there's a there's a like, oh, we've only been to strip clubs where they're fucking hilarious. Like and and like we went to one called the the Boot, Ala Great Alaskan Bush Company in Alaska, which was I mean fucking, I mean they're. I, the fucking stories we went we almost went to big owls the other day and uh wherever the fuck we were playing where did we play where was i yesterday isn't that crazy i don't know where i was that's crazy that is crazy yeah uh great alaskan bush company is. i was with um i was with uh uh someone I work with, I work with all women, right? And so I tell I tell them, I said, this uh, Great Alaskan Bush Company is, it's cool. It's like a chill place. It kind of it kind of reminds you of Deadwood a little bit. So that's what it looks like. And I go, and it's, it's chill. It's more people hanging out drinking. The way strip clubs were in Florida, that's what they were. Every night you ended up in a strip club with everyone. You just went there. And so like, I, I've always had that vibe of like, it's fun. It's, it's a good time. So we get there and I'm not paying attention. And I'm sitting next to, uh, one of the young ladies I work with, uh, I won't say her name, so I don't have to out her. And she is, she has a look on her face like, I go, huh? I go, what's going on? You having a good time? She goes, it's, it's full nude. I said, what? She goes, this is full nude. I go, no, it's not. She goes, um, look at the stage, and there is a woman on all fours that we can practically see through. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, oh my god, we gotta get the fuck out of here! Oh my god, and I have all these women in here. Like I was like, come on, let's go hang out. And everyone's like, uh, this is aggressive. This is really aggressive. So uh, we call that night quits kind of early. We had a we pulled it. We pulled the plug early. But um, I'm so glad you're alive. Thank you, Bert. Me I too, love you dude. to death. I, I love do. you. Thank you for letting me come on here. Watch my uh, podcast, too. Subscribe to my oh, podcast. hold on. Do. The best podcast out there. Without a fucking I'm doubt. This. Without a fucking <laughs> doubt. The Honeydew is you're so good at interviewing people. I've watched you have conversations with people I've had conversations with the same week, and I absolutely left so much meat on every fucking bone. You, you milk that shit you get the best conversations out of people and i don't know how you do it i don't know but it's fucking your podcast is awesome thank awesome. you dude. thank you honestly it means everything. it's a it's and i'm saying this it's, it's a must top 10 list it's like it's if you have top 10 favorite podcasts I'll, I'll tell you right now if if the same guy's doing my podcast and ryan's podcast and you you only have time to listen to one podcast 
I wouldn't listen to mine. <laughs> Unless you want to hear me tell the machine story again. <laughs> no, your podcast you, is dude. the fucking best. That blows me away. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad you're healthy. Thank and congrats you. Watch on the special. my special, Lefty Sun, on my YouTube as well. Subscribe, share. That's how these things get out there. Yeah. 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 And, and that's the biggest thing. I say this in all my shows. But you're sharing his special yours t enjoying it first off just enjoy it yeah sit back and enjoy it make make it a, don't don't watch it on the bus or in the subway take it take a second S link your tv up to the big screen throw it up on youtube from youtube up on the big screen and enjoy it and then after you enjoy it fucking share it tell your friends spread the word ryan is you are one of the best dudes in this game you're one of the sweetest guy guys in the fucking world and and you are absolutely fucking hilarious and i'm so glad you're still alive thank you i love you dude i would have been bummed if you had died me too <laughs> me too bro i bet i bet i'd be more bummed <laughs> i don't know i wouldn't know but i feel like i'd be pretty <laughs> who do you think would cry more me or tom you of course you're emotional of and that's how we end this episode <laughs> you no doubt <laughs> <laughs>